All right, so I was trying to share some of my experiences here trading the market, and it's an open discussion, so anytime feel free to chime in, ask questions, and share your ideas. But I'm just gonna walk through like a very simple template of like a market breakdown, uh, how to read the market, how to think and develop your own strategy, like uh, trading modules or ships. And then since Winter Nexus is coming up, I thought it's a good opportunity to use it as like a case study on how you might trade some of the items that are coming out. And then Q&A at the end, but you guys can ask or talk at any time, so. So, let's see here. I don't know how much people know about the market. I'm just gonna assume. Uh, just start from ground zero, buddy, because I don't yeah. know anything. Okay. So, let's see here. Seems like there's a lot. Um, well, starting out, I'm semi-retired from the game, and I made my money by trading pretty much almost every item in the game, besides industrial items. So I do have a broad scope of how the EVE economy works. I would say the bread and butter of how I made my wealth, as you guys know, is from trading capitals. So I was jumping capitals around, putting items in it, and then reselling it to the hoard market, predominantly and doing fire cell contracts. Um, some of these are not viable anymore because of the changes CCP made after scarcity and there were changes to Sinos and stuff. So um, I'm actually trying to look for ideas too as well. Um, but, so for example, if I were to pull up a chart here, This is a website known as Adam for Eve. You can use it for trading data. And since we have participants here today, I'm gonna to ask a volunteer if I pull up a chart. Let's see. Would you guys be able to tell me what's going on when you look at this chart? What kind of story it's telling here? Uh, yeah, let me pull this one up here. Sorry. Like, would you be able to read this chart and tell me what's going on with the price action? Uh, there was an event. CCP did an event that put a lot of skill extractors on the market. Yeah. Right. So sale. The price or a sale. Yeah. Right. Or a sale. That's what I meant. Yeah. So you guys are aware. This is when they but did the, the two for one, right? Right. But the volume spiked in June. Mm -hmm. buy order for trades mm -hmm. so to my knowledge they ran the sale twice already i'm i've been hoping with my fingers crossed that they would do the sale again but so far no luck so this was the first time they did it uh, i think most people were not aware of how much money you can make from this trade so i was one of those people i probably only put about five to ten percent of my net worth and it bounced back very quickly but after evos and all these other people got word that this is probably one of the best trades you can make. Uh, the second time the sale came around earlier this year, they just dumped all their money into it. So you see this huge crash. People were averaging around yeah. Yeah, 300, 350 mil per extractor. And now we're back up at the 500s here. Yeah, we're right at 500. So what happened in, in May, do you know? Is it based off this chart? Yeah, based off the well, so like you can see the moving average drops to what is that a, a there's a, a level right there in my brain. Right. What it is, but if you, it's the same level as the median day price in February, but so yeah, what happened at that time point that caused the market to drop? So to be more accurate, I'd probably pull up a Google search of exactly when CCP released that two for one sale, but I'm gonna assume it was on the 18th here. And it's good that you're bringing, I'm, I'm pretty sure you know technical analysis based on your terminology. So these are, I'm going to use some um, like stock market trading terminology as well. So you guys can uh, learn a couple of things. I think higher, higher low is the, the term I was looking for, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure they released the sale here on the 18th, just as a generalization. And then as people bought into the sale, it immediately crashed the market. 
and people were just liquidating, 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 and then it was just coming back up. So I actually think they ran three sales, if I'm not mistaken. And the last time was in June. But just to use this chart as an example, do you guys know how to read the lines and all the little dots and these little uh, channels here? Do you guys know with volume? Nope. Okay. So it's very... Uh, I'm sure you know a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's very important to interpret... Um, like every little edge you can get from the data, it works to your advantage. So it's not like a direct correlation with stock market trading, but there are some similarities here. Uh, first thing to start out with is volume. Volume is very important because it indicates the conviction of the trade in the market. If there's low volume like these bars here, it means that there's not a lot of product moving hands. So um, whether it's oil, like in real term, real market terms like oil or stock or whatever the underlying asset is, if the volume is weak, that trend, you can expect it to be easily reversible or it's not gonna follow through for a long time. Um, here, there was just tons of volume because it was like a sudden event. So people were trying to like buy and sell within, what is this, three days? One, two, three, four, five days here. So, Volume can be a great indicator of what the market is convicted to do in terms of like a movement. Right, a supply and demand kind of deal. Correct. I find it interesting that in the first event, uh, you see the price action is so dramatic with the amount of volume compared to the third one. Mm -hmm. Because now the market has factored in this was more like a what the hell event. Like CCP has never done a two for one sale before. And everyone was like, whoa, this is a pretty big deal. And it hit the market, but it recovered quickly because in my speculation um, or my analysis, I think not a lot of people bought into the deal. But the second and the third time around, they knew what kind of returns to expect. So they bought in a lot heavier. So when they buy and stockpile extractors, it takes a longer time, as you can see here, from the initial event all the way to today, it took like, what is this? Almost five months to recover back to 500 mil. Whereas before, because there was not a lot of inventory, they were able to sell it to the market and it bounced back fairly quickly, within like two months, I'd say three months but to cover these little uh, lines and dots the dots will show you um, kind of like where the price is trying to go, go towards so if a dot closes above these two lines that means the market there's more buy demand than sell demand uh, on the flip side, if you see these little dots ending up below these two lines, that means that there's more downward pressure. And we can also see that as a correlation here on this chart. So, so they're basically like a candle, right? You're looking, say, at a stock yeah, chart or, I, I think or, you, X or I think you could say that. It's like a wick. or they, they do show the wicks here to show like the highs and lows of that day. Yeah, exactly. But where it ends is important. And then... Obviously, this is showing here if you didn't have this context and if you didn't know you could zoom in and out of this. Like, the dots ending lower means it's more downward pressure. More people want to sell this item. So, there was down pressure and then now at this point it was oversold. So, people were buying, buying, buying and then it bounced back up and then you see starting here there's a breakout and then people were so, wanting to buy more than sell so it kept going just on. to like reiterate for my own clarification so the the top of the wick is the highest that price reached in a day and yes. the bottom is the lowest right the position of the dot is is where it closed for the day correct correct so okay. don't don't quote me exactly because i'm kind of rusty with my stock market terminology and stuff but 
just a general idea is pretty similar to like stock market trading. Um, also, these two different colored lines, the moving average of the blue is five days, which is shorter. The moving average of the orange or the red, if, depending on what you see, is 20 days, which is longer. So as you were mentioning earlier, like the moving average, uh, the blue line will also be indicative of where the trend is headed. So if you saw this blue line dipping below the orange line, that means it's a downward trend. So you could use it as a reliable indicator that, oh, this item's gonna keep going down. And then it broke too, be too low. And then when it broke above the 20 day moving average, it showed a reversal. So when it's trading, trending above the orange line, it's saying it's an upward pattern. Something interesting too for trend analysis with other markets is that anytime those lines cross, typically you'll see a reversal or action in some way or another. Yeah, this is a very extreme example. I'll show you other examples, yeah. but usually it's called a death cross, right? Where if it crosses over, it's a red alarm here. It's like a red flag, like you got to get out of this trade. And then it's about crashes. This is refreshing my memory back from my crypto days. Yeah. So I actually pulled up one of the examples. Well, I guess I'll get to it later. But that's just very general. Uh, how to read the chart. Another thing I want to add is if you come down here to the show table button, this is also something I feel most people overlook. Um, this is a it's kind of like a spreadsheet version of the chart that you were looking at, the graph. But this will also show you in numbers how many of those items traded on that day. So I also use this as another bonus to show me, okay, um, was there high volume? Was there low volume? Uh, for example, I was trading a lot of pink skins, as you guys know, or some of you guys know. When it first came out, they were trading hundreds of these skins in one day. But after most of the people dumped it from like the Twitch streams and the crates that they got, it starts to dwindle and fade out. And you can see here, it's just double digits and it gets really low. So this is another point where I know that I can start accumulating and buying out the market. This Varger skin is one of the items that I was betting on and I was accumulating at around 100 mil each. And the way I knew when to do that is by looking at these numbers to see where it starts uh, turning back up. So if you look here, it was at 150 mil. And then after a week or two, it starts dipping to 94. And then 67, 81, 83. So once I see like an average price and then it slowly starts to go back up from 92, 96, 97, this is around a time where I'm gonna say, okay, there, there's a reversal here. There's a trend reversal. And I'll slowly start putting in buy orders. And then I'll start accumulating after whatever, like two, three, four week period. And then as you can see here, it starts going to 112, 169, 162, and then it starts going higher. But this crashed because CCP just released another crate. So I think this is an anticipation for uh, Winter Nexus. So I'm kind of screwed, but I digress. Um, another thing, since we were using skill extractors as like an example, Adam for Eve is great because it gives you more context. Whenever you're looking at a chart, I think most people just look at it and they don't know how to make sense of it. What I'm looking for is what story is this chart telling me? Um, if you looked at the chart, you wouldn't get the full picture. But when I go to Adam for Eve and I try to predict the price action of the future, I like to use this chart down here. This is a buy and sell volume and it shows you how much interest is in the market. Do you guys know how to interpret this uh, graph? Um, What's that? Less people buying and more people selling? Is that? Correct. Yes, exactly. So these are the price points. Like, let's say over here, 305 mil, 350 mil. These are all the orders in EVE, in Jita, in the Forge, where these are all the buy orders and what price they're willing to buy at. These are all the sell orders. 
and what they're willing to sell at. So clearly, you can see a very clear uh, depiction of there's tons of sell orders for extractors, and there's not a lot of buyers for extractors. So if we go back to the EVE window and look at extractors, You have hundreds and hundreds of extractors for sale, and it goes all the way down. These are all the items for sale, and then if you look at the buy orders, there's actually not as many. There's like 1, 30, 10, 25. So it's just com comparing the whole picture for you. So in this case, when you have way more products for sale, and very few people interested in buying, you know, basic supply and demand, it's more likely that the price will trend downward because these guys are going to keep discounting until they liquidate all the extractors. And these guys will keep, once the orders get filled and knocked out, the price will get lower and lower and lower. Is there a correlation in uh, skill extractor movement and skill injector movement? Correct. At all or anything? Okay. So there is a triangulation here. The starting point of almost all the skill related items in this game are based off Plex, right? Plex is pretty much real life and in game currency. When you see CCP run a Plex sale, that will have knock on effects to all the other skill related items in the game. So if they ran like a 20% Plex sale right now, that would drop the price of Plex. And in turn, that would drop the price of large skill injectors to a certain degree, and also skill extractors. And on the flip side, if CCP ran another like two for one extractor sale again tomorrow, you would probably see Plex spike up to 5.5, 5.2 to even six mil a pop. This is when the skill extractor sale happened. And then as people spend their plex, it will trend down again. So if you were to actually superimpose these two charts, you would see a direct correlation of these spikes with the skill extractor sale on the same chart. Mm. So what I'm doing right now, actually, in anticipation for the extractor sale, I'm buying up uh, plex in the market hoping that they will do another sale. Um, so that's a little bit on reading the charts, trying to get you know, some kind of context out of the item that you're looking at. And that leads to being able to develop your own thought process and trade strategy, right? Let's say you're an industrialist, you want to sell your materials or your gas, you got to know uh, when's a good time, uh, where to sell it, stuff like that. I don't know too much about industry. I traded a lot in like Dead Space, faction modules, uh, ships as well. I traded a lot of blocks. And so it just depends on what you're interested in trading. Um, right now, Marauders are trending a lot higher because I think as soon as CCP announced that there's going to be a Winter Nexus, people already know what to expect. So they started buying Marauders, obviously for Redding, as you can see here. It doesn't help that they're doing these two events back to back almost. Like they had the October event, so it already trended higher throughout the Halloween event. And then they just announced Winter Nexus, so now it just spiked even higher. So Marauders, and everything revolving around Mara Marauders are very hot. So, uh, I don't have the fit. But if we're using Winter Nexus as like a case study at this point, you would want to look into uh, Marauder fits. Let's say I'm going to use a Paladin, for example, to run Winter Nexus uh, combat sites. What I would do is pull up a Paladin fit, or even just Google like a uh, 
So this guy posted on Eve Reddit, and he posted his paladin fit. So they're not going to be like identical, but you can get the general sense of what kind of items it's going to use. Like armor tank with armor repair. Um, it's going to need a web. It's going to need a membrane and like a tracking or like damage mods. So then I would go back into the market and start looking through all those items that the paladin is going to use for the event. Uh, how about the Bastion module since every Marauder uses it? Right, so that's a great point. Bastion module is a great starting point, but here's my um, opinion on it. And actually, that's very important. I have a lot of ISK. So for me, even if I buy the wrong item and I have to sit on it, it doesn't matter. But I can confidently say the average player doesn't have a lot of is to spare to leave it sitting in different items and if it doesn't go up you can't turn it over and make a profit so you want to be very selective with what items you invest in you want it you want to hold it for a short period of time and when it comes time to sell you want to have a high margin of profit right i don't like to buy something that's like only going to go up five ten percent and i had to hold it for six months it's a waste of time and the whole reason for market trading, the philosophy is, yes, you can do your exploration, your combats, your manufacturing, but market trading is awesome because you're not directly trading your time for profit. It's like, it's like a salary job. Whenever you're doing these in-game activities like ratting or exploration, you're, you're calculating based off of a time factor. Like, I make 400 mil an hour, I make 600 mil an hour, the whole concept of trading on contracts in the market is if I have this character can trade 273 items at any given time. So Oh shit boy, am I am I too late for class? What yeah. time was it? Uh you're about 30 <laughs> minutes late. <laughs> you're tardy, dude. <laughs> He's not even tardy. He's absent. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much you want to utilize all these slots to work for you. You're, you're, the concept is you're making your money work for you. You're not working for your money. So it's a different philosophy. Um, so what the most exciting aspect for me is whenever I put these market orders up, the next morning I wake up, especially on the weekends, I see like 10 bill isk in my wallet. That feels great because I didn't have to really do much. I just put these up for sale. And then the next morning, some of them sell, great. If they didn't sell, I just go ahead and go in and modify the order, like update the order. And then that took me like what? Three seconds. And I just go through the list, update it. Um, Bastion, the reason why I wouldn't do it, first of all, I don't think the profit margin is there. You can see the spread here, right? It's selling for 10.4 and you're buying it for 9.2. Um, I don't think that's a great profit margin if you ask me. Let's say 9.2 divided by 10.4. Before taxes and fees, you're making an 11% re return on investment. Okay. I don't like that. So I'll use uh, one of the items I got ready for this example. Let's say the Paladin uses Large Armor Repair 2, right? But a lot of the times, people will use a Faction or a Dead Space variant of that. So just keep that Bastion module in mind. It was only 11% return on profit, or return on investment. Look at this one. Shadow Serpentis, a lot of people use this during that event, and I'll show you how I know. If you look at the previous Winter Nexus event, Last year, it was around this time. So it was trading at about 19 to 18 mil. And as soon as the event hit, it spiked. People were buying and selling this almost at 75 mil. And then after the event faded out, the market normalized and it started trading back at its average price of 20 mil. We're right. All right, on my way to Jita. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> This was a great example and I was going to buy out the market, but I didn't do it yet because I wanted to show you. So I just put buy orders here. I'm going to adjust it. Right. 
Um, I'm not gonna buy it out just so you guys can try to trade this on your own in Jita. Normally what I would have done is as soon as I saw this opportunity, because I have the, the available cash, I would have bought all this out until probably 25 to 30 mil. You would have seen all this gone by now. And the great thing about this is a very low volume item. And that's, that segues into the next topic is you want to trade items. For me personally, what I've learned is I don't like high volume items with a low margin. I want uh, low volume items with very high margin. Same thing with skins, same thing with Dead Space faction modules. When you have a limited supply and a high demand, that's the greatest opportunity you're going to have to make maximum profit. So hey, I, can you can you check like true size and large armor as since you're already on this fucking tab right now? Yeah. True Sanchez go down during the Christmas event. Oh, this one went up too. So yeah. this was averaging 85 mil a pop, and it spiked up to almost 150 a pop. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So if you that, calculate this one. Right. For my pal out and I always use the true such large armor. There you go. We already have a customer here. So you're looking yeah, at a it's true though. 40 percent, 43 percent return on investment before taxes and fees. So I would say this is much better than the Bastion module. It, personally, because yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll tell you why. Number one. I don't have to compete with as many buyers and sellers in the market, and I don't have to adjust these orders as much. I'm freaking lazy. I want to make as much money as possible in the lowest amount of effort as possible. So you want to be dealing with high margin, high demand, but very low supply. Again, I'm so, not going to... Go ahead. In your experience for this event, would you say Paladins and like Fargers are the most used uh, marauders? I did it for a very short amount of time last year, and I remember a lot of people were using Praxises and Paladins. Interesting. That makes sense. And I briefly skimmed over the, the announcement. I think it's divvied up into three different categories. There's Exploration, there's Combat, and Mining. So now you mentioned the Endurance, right? Uh, well, I'm going to and start buying Endurances, so... Uh... Well, people are already ahead of, <laughs> they're already ahead of you. So right. endurance is spiked from 12 to 13 millipop to 50 millipop last Winter Nexus event. And they never went back down to 12. <laughs> no. And I think people know better now because people are catching on the trends. So they were actually front running the market since about a week or two ago. And they're slowly accumulating. You see this accumulation happening here? People know, so they're buying. It looks like there's still room for margin though. So uh, something that happens when people are trying to front run the market, they get ahead of each other, and then this was empty, and then they were selling at like 30 something. I started selling my items at 30 something. So you bring the price back down, and then you could buy it up and sell it again. But right now, endurance, people are already kind of, you know, they were speculating pretty hard on it. The, the classic pump and dump. Correct. So you want it, you want it, that's why you want to broaden your scope and whatever comes to mind immediately for you, like Bastion module, tracking enhancers, webs, armor repairs. What I encourage for you to develop your own trade strategy is don't only think about what immediately comes to mind, but then think another one or two steps ahead of that. So let's say like tracking enhancers or like a webify or something, right? Another thing is like processors. If you're going to use a Varger, a processor is great. Dread Garistas, they're very cheap right now. I have buy orders for that. So Dread Garistas, they have the same stats. You also want to compare the stats, right? Especially for repairers, because they have different CPU and power grid requirements. This, the processors have well, the also, same specs. Go ahead. What also has a great, well, also has a great margin in general is, and that's. Pretty much when you have some that's laying around, of course, it's the unstable plasma market. Have you, well, what, what do you think personally from the, from uh, the multi plasma? I've never traded them, so I think you have way more knowledge on that topic. I only started like two weeks ago when you told me about it. Yeah, like look at look at the Hunter the Mentor example on the unstable. See, 
what the what the percentages want to see from your perspective. Oh, this is great, but I I don't know the context here. So like you just pulled this up and you said this is great. What 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 makes you say <laughs> that's great? Like a large movement. Uh, well, probably. Okay, so, so it's kind of like second nature for me, but I just immediately look at the chart, right? Right, like I know that I'm picking up on that. That's what I was asking. Like, what, what sticks out to so, you? So, so the immediate thing that stood out to me was: let's assume this is when Winter Nexus started, right? People are going to use hundred MN afterburners. That means they're like, oh shoot, I need to get a better hundred MN afterburner and roll it. So people started rolling for the Winter Nexus event, and they needed this item. So you can see the price spiking up here. So let me go ahead and I've go back to go ahead. No, I've also known people that run a best like like for instance the unstable hundred of men is pretty fucking limited. Mm -hmm. People with a lot of cash at some point, they they make sure they keep buying the cheaper uh, unstables plus setting up buy orders. And then at some given point you see you see it like really easy when when a hundred of men unstable for instance, the price goes up really fucking quick. Because I mean you only can get those things in the abyss and then you're gonna create like really like big supply and demand because like for instance if I'm rolling like 100 MN core X type I'm not rolling one and not rolling two you might roll like five or six ten. you know <laughs> yeah Correct. or ten yeah yeah exactly so um, you yeah. you I think you have way 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 more knowledge than me I, I know almost nothing about that market but I started dipping my toes in because of you actually um, and that's mm -hmm. that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. You want to be investing in items where there's very limited supply and the source of that supply is very predictable. So you know you can only get these kind of unstables from the abyssals. And another thing to keep in mind, you got to understand your end customer, right? Like anything in business, you want to know who you're selling to. When you're dealing with faction, dead space, and these kind of rolling modules, module items, you're selling to like the top 10% of the EVE players in the game. They don't care if you're gonna mark it up by 10, 15%. If they want it, they want it. Same thing with officer modules. They're not gonna be nitpicky like, oh, this is, this went up 10%, so I'm not gonna buy it. They don't, they usually don't give a damn. They're willing to pay if they want it, no matter what. So. I, for, for just an example, for my Draugr, right? I had to roll like a max power grip for my plate to make it make it fit. And I started buying the unstable plasmids at like six, seven mil a pop. When I finally got my fucking plate that I needed, the, the unstable was sitting at like 25 mil a pop. Mm -hmm. But I still was buying them because I wanted to make, make my dragger work, you know? Right. So just to give you kind of like an example how, how it goes. So Pixels is the dream customer that we want to serve. <laughs> we we love people like Pixels. Whatever you want, we got it. It's like it's like he's like the high roller at the poker table. We're going to accommodate whatever you want. You tell me what you want, we got it. So I'm going to take note of when Pixels goes to cheat. I'm going to go to cheat. <laughs> yeah. Can you idea where the holes have gone down? Uh they've gone up a little bit. Let's see here. Uh, they're at a low point right this second, as of a few months range. Um, so another thing is, I think this is also a good time to mention, uh, you want to be aware of the EVE landscape, because predominantly it works like a military industrial complex, right? So you got to know the politics, whether you like it or not. If you're going to be trading in EVE, you got to know what the large blocks are doing. You got to skim over EVE Reddit. You got to follow the news and see if there's going to be a war, uh, what kind of doctrine they're flying. I flew with Horde for a long time, so I know uh, very deeply their doctrines, how they fly, what they fly, where they're going. Um, another example is they were using the Tempest fleet issue as their bread and butter to use on the offensive. So here's what happens. Let's say on average a horde fleet uses about 200 tfis what happens after the fight and the war is over they all have to dump this inventory now if everyone's trying to run for the same door you're gonna have a price crash 
So what I've been doing right now is I've been buying TFIs in the Horde market for 350 mil a pop. I then use their logistics service, and then I import it to Jita, and then I sell it at 500 mil a pop, which you can see here, this is my last one. So I'm pretty much doing arbitrage here, it's trade arbitrage. Also, I think masters. <laughs> it should be fair to, to note that the EVE economy is almost 100% driven by destruction, other than small events here and there, like, it's a zero-sum economy. Hang on a second. Yeah. So, Lashak, I'm sorry to say I don't know exactly why, and actually it just dipped pretty hard. I would have to say things to consider would be like the supply and demand, the supply chain of the uh, items you need to build it. And I know it's a very strong doctrine in uh, wormholes. Maybe people just don't want it anymore, or they change the doctrine. Or not lose it doesn't it many die. Nah, exactly. It doesn't die enough to make a war roll. You don't see it in NullSec, you only see it in Wormhole Space. Mm -hmm. And when the, the, the big armor brawls in, in Wormhole Space do happen, but not too often, when they do happen, not many Lashaks die. Yeah. Or it's only like a one-sided story, so... Mm -hmm. Okay, they're back. Yeah. So, yeah, Lashak, it's just some of those things where you want to be aware of. Uh, like, earlier this year, late last year, T2 ships were dirt cheap. I don't know if you guys remember. But there was a huge glut of T2 ships. And then they bounced back in like the last four to six months. These things used to be like a hundred... 30 to 50 mil a pop down here. So I was accumulating about half of my portfolio just in T2 ships. And then I sold over here a little too early, but it's just one of those. Oh, another thing is faction and dead space modules. They are, they have ebbs and flows with faction warfare. So let's see. I take it those are faction ships as well. Yes. Exactly the same as faction ships. So if you see like Kaldari ships and items or Minmatar ships and items, if you see there's a trend downward, what I do is I explore all the items from that faction in Faction Warfare, and then I start accumulating. I start buying. So Imperial Navy, I, I like this one a lot. This one's used quite heavily in a lot of doctrines. Right now it's not that low, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll eyeball this every couple weeks or so. That's why when you guys hear me just sitting around, I'm constantly scouring the market for the price levels of these items. Like I'll look at this and then next week, next week I'll take a look again. And then when I see that it's at a low point around here, that's when I'll start putting in buy orders and say, hey, you know what, I think this is a good time to enter. And I'll just buy 10 of these at this price. And then I slowly start accumulating. Another thing I want to mention is risk management, right? You're gonna say, hey, we found a great item to trade here. Let's let's go back to the large armor. I'm not gonna do it so you guys can buy it out. But let's say here, I'm gonna cancel this. You're gonna be like, hey, what's the so uh someone who's not shy, how much money do you have in your wallet right now? How much is? Uh let's see. 1.5 billion. Okay. 1.5. Yep. So I'd say that's a pretty good starting point, but obviously it's very easy to lose track when you start picking items to buy. And when you take another look after you're done, it's gonna be at like 300 mil. So you wanna be wise with how you diversify your portfolio, right? So if I'm gonna put a buy order for this, you're gonna say, how many should I buy at what price? You have to do risk management. Some people, if you look at these items, they put like 200 or like 500, why would you do that? Because every time you adjust your order, you have to pay a fee. Uh, that was a new update like not too long ago. Before, it was a flat fee. You just pay 100 disc to adjust your order. But in order to get rid of bots and stuff, they made it much more expensive to change your market order. So Yeah, because you used to just sit there and play market games, right? Where like you and like 10 dudes just constantly changing your prices. Yeah, that was a zero one this game and it was it was a nightmare. It was horrible. So I actually, yeah. even though it costs more now, I love it because it's less competitive and you don't have to like pull your hair out. So in this case, 
I, if I'm going to be wise with my money, I would put a buy order down here and say, you, you want to set this order here. By default, I believe it goes to immediate. And it's simple. It's going to look like this. So I go to advanced. I'm going to put a buy order, let's say here. And you want to always sort it by the highest price for buyer and the lowest price for seller. This, this in between is a spread. So I'm going to buy it at, I have to beat this buyer's price. So I'm going to put it at 17,200. And I'm just going to buy three. You're, you adjust your lot size. Because here's what happens sometimes. Sometimes when you're drunk or you're tired or you have a fat finger, you'll accidentally plus 33. So what's supposed to be a 50 mil order, you're actually going to put in a 500 mil order. And that's and actually... Also, okay. also, one thing I just want to say, and I, I see this mistake happen to me sometimes, from time to time, is that when you set up the buy order price or sell price, always double check the price because also since the market change and you can't do the 1S, depending on the item, you have to go by 100 isk up or 1000 isk up or 10,000 isk up. Otherwise, the order will change to the same price up as the last person. Correct. Because you need to have like a significant increase in the... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the numbers you increment by a thousand. Not really. You just need like uh, four of the most significant digits. Yeah, I mean, so generally So changing the thousand. fourth most digit, uh, yeah. So changing the fourth most significant, that will basically keep your uh, change. If you change to the fifth significant, then it's going to round up the yeah. fourth. So if you look at my wallet here, you can see I have 15 bill. So if I were to be fat fingering or I'm tired or I'm drunk and I accidentally, what's supposed to be 17 mil 200, I add another zero by accident, which, ha which happens a lot more often than you think. I'm paying 800% over for three of these, I just lost money big time on that. Like all your profits for the other items just went out the window. So at least, and it will actually give you a warning, like, are you sure you want to do that order? But at least here, if you control your lot size to a very low quantity, you kind of protect yourself in a way as well. So I have uh, one question that I got to run. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like we were talking about, you know, the, the paladin fits and whatnot for this event. Um, yep. What is your single favorite source to looking at like popular fits for like ratting one us? Like if you were to go to a website, say like Z Kill or whatever. It would be Z Kill. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't do it too often. I think it's probably because I know off the back of my head. But yeah, if you want to look at specific fits, probably Z Kill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go to work, but thanks oh. for the, yep. the stream. Thanks for coming. So let's say we finish up this order here, put three. You wanna change your duration to the longest time possible. So from immediate, you wanna go to three months. Range is, usually I do station because I hate putting orders that get filled like 10 jumps out and then I have to go pick up like 500 ammo. It's a nightmare, I freaking hate it. So I just <laughs> set it at station and then if you want to save this configuration, you just do remember settings and then you just submit your order at buy. And then the next time you pull up that order for any other item, it will be set to three months station and you just change your price and your quantity. So a couple of the things that come up, I don't know if they're going to do it again for Winter Nexus, but let's say like, uh, what are the drugs that drop again? Like Pyrolancia. Those usually go down. Yeah, uh, hard shell, right? So these were originally great for accumulating, but I've been sitting on mine for almost a year and yeah, yeah, it's they, still they hard to sell. So I would say don't do the drugs unless you're willing to sit on this for at least like minimum three to six months. Don't do it. Don't buy these. Don't do the drugs, kids. Yeah, don't buy them. Don't do them. Do something else. Well, damn, I got to go now then. <laughs> yeah. See ya. Where are you leaving? No, I was joking. You guys oh. said I can't do the drugs. 
Uh, Gen Illusions, I think. No, this was a different event. Pixels learned that the hard way. Yeah. Stay away from that shit. That that graph that you see going up, that's me. Yeah. So we do want to keep an eye out. I know they dropped some cerebral accelerators and stuff, <laughs> but. Oh, damn, I can't remember what exactly drops from it. But some of the things, mm. it's good to buy. Um, and then after you accumulate it, you sell. But most of you guys, I think, because you have to sit on it for a long time, I would probably be cautious. I would more so focus on the modules to sell to the people that are going to run the sites. I think another one is like Virtues, right? But Virtues, I just checked, they've been floating pretty high because of the previous event. We should be buying down here. But I think the Halloween event, no, what is this? This was in the summertime. It spiked. So low grade virtues look pretty good because there's gonna be scanning events. Uh, try black glass. Black glass. Yeah. Scanning. It's for the hacking. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if this was exactly Winter Nexus. So this one might go up. So you, the the way you're telling me, like, look into these, I think you already have a good understanding of, like, what items would be in demand. And we have about a month out before Winter Nexus. So you can speculate by, like, buying a couple of these, right? 37. I'll just buy three. Oh, someone just sold me an armor. So the great thing about this is you don't have to adjust the market orders as much. And whenever you just pop into Jita, you check up on your market orders, like you skim through it, and then you just adjust it and go back into your thing. Hey. The nice thing uh, was also good for trading, and I've seen this, for instance, like I was buying like Prometheum for 60,000 a unit. Mm -hmm. And I think right now, like, I think one day later, Price was already up to like 62k or 63k or something like that. Wow. Uh, one, of, one of the high end. Uh... Wow, this is very high right now. I think this is pure speculation for the new Garistas and Angels ships. Also, potential uh, market manipulation by those who control the sources. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not too sure. Oh, by the way. People, people will still want to make their money there, so they will sell it anyway. I wanted to ask you regarding the um, Winter Nexus. Uh, what's the um, like special effects of the event? Like for instance, for instance, in the Blood Rages event, right? Uh, there's a 90% loot drop. Uh, does Winter Nexus have the same thing? No. There's snow all it's over the space. Storm. You can use high sec, high storm filaments to move it from anywhere to high sec. That's, That's the oh, gimmick. Damn. This was from last year's uh, announcement. So just like ice storms. Uh, this is a really good for this event. It's what you want to do is you want to like all your no sex shit that you want to get out. It's an NPC area or anything like that. Use those high sec buildings. Oh. Load up DSTs and bring it to high sec. Yeah, if you want to get back from the hole, load it into an orb or a DST, jump into the null sec, pop a high sec element, safety. Though. There's a chance that there's a high sec ice storm in an island high sec. You, know, you can get taken to that one. Then you need to, need to pop another high sec to get closer to Jitter or whatever. Yeah. It's going to be a good opportunity yeah. to move all the ore out that or minerals that you've got stacked everywhere. Because it's hard to move. Yeah. So, I mean, the orcas should also shoot up around this time, right? Especially with. Yep. Uh, mm, I'm not too sure. Maybe the porpoise? Two years ago, orcas were allowed into the sites. Then one year ago, they disallowed them from getting into the sites. Go figure. That's weird because it's a mining bar. They didn't want them smuggling <laughs> combat ships into the sites. Oh. <laughs> yeah. People are smart. I mean. Yeah, so. Is it, is it the winter nexus with the loot boxes, uh, Argus? Yeah. Funny thing is, I still have some loot boxes scattered around. I'll be able to experiment and see if last year's boxes could produce uh, usable stuff. How much, how much did you make from last year with just mining? Billions and billions. Damn. Yeah, I mean, 
It's not a finger. Yeah, oh, so even like an ore strip miner, right? No. You can't use this? Yeah. You would want ice miners. And even then, it's not worth buying those because, uh, well, I mean, I don't know if there is a faction ice miner. Yeah, there is ore strip miner. Can't you use this for ice? No, you need an ore ice miner, or ice harvester, but those those exist. That said, I don't think they're worth the investment, and it looks like last year the price didn't care. Yeah, not too much. So, yeah, because if you... Well, I'm kind of surprised about how many people are buying them, though. That's because you don't have waste, right? So, what do you see a lot? So go ahead and get in on this, boys. Armor repairs is a good starting point for your uh, investment strategy. If I still see these orders sitting, I'm going to buy it out tomorrow. Dude, it's all oh, going to be there, Kuga. <laughs> Do it tomorrow, not today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, Pixel. <laughs> Since you're not home at your computer. Yeah, exactly. I, I right. still need some armor. I need 10 of them. Okay. Should I buy it and save it for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking buy 10 and contract oh, it to So, picture. True Sanj has another good one too. It went from 100 to 150. But, yeah. Any which more one, questions? Which one are you looking at right now? This is True Sanj. So, he's oh, saying, okay, so okay. I'm, I'm just playing catch up. He's saying buy, buy as many as you can and hold them for the event. Correct. Well, even if you buy it, I'm pretty sure one person can easily buy out this. This is only like 400 mil at most in armor reps. And I think it's an easy double. Easy. Because what's going to happen is once you buy it out, unless people have existing stockpiles, people have to go to Faction war Warfare, claim it, and trade it in, and then put it back on the market. But even if they did that, they wouldn't have enough compared to like a large armor rep too, where anybody can manufacture it. This is technically like unlimited supply. And even this, look, during Winter Nexus, a regular Tech 2 armor repair went from 2 mil to 5 mil peak. So this is just one of the many examples. Like that's why it takes time for you to start out and say, okay, Winter Nexus is coming up. What kind of ships would people fly? Are they gonna use a Praxis or a Paladin? And then you look at the doctrinal fit and you look up those modules and you start buying it up. Russians will use the, the practices, everybody else will use. When 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 in high sec, right? In high sec they used to use the, the Abyssal Proven Grants. Dude, those were legendary for named T one modules. The air was normally na named T one Yeah, no, but named T T one modules where some of them were like really cheap, twenty thousand this. Boom, the Abyssal Proven Ground happened. They were going for like a hundred K a pop for or a million of popping, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, like, the Abyssal Proving Grounds was, was a week, and as soon as Proving God was done, it went down again. But I'm kinda, that's why I'm kind of hoping they would do more, like, little events or get the Proving Grounds back into the game. I think even Smart Bombs, this is a good one, too. I remember using Faction Smart Bombs because they go out to 7,500 meters, and the frigates and cruisers that orbit you you can clear them with the faction smart bombs. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure this was from the Winter Nexus 2. I would probably start stockpiling this right now. Because it's at so almost like an all time low. Do you need these smart bombs? Yeah. Well, Asuki's <laughs> in Cheetah right now. Well, yeah. again, keep in mind how much money you have available to invest, right? Uh, for me, it's not a big deal if I sit on it and whatever. But if you only have a bill to invest, you want to calculate the return on investment potential first. So let's say you buy this right now at like 140 mil each. Um, and then you're probably going to sell it at, to be safe, let's say like 140 or 150. No. Maybe 160. I'm gonna go no knife uh, incursions. Eh, it's not that get great. Some <laughs> to get some is capital. <laughs> I would say a great starting point though is definitely the armor reps, and then look for other opportunities and other things like uh, armor hardeners and stuff like that. 
uh, shield hardeners, armor hardeners, that kind of stuff. But yeah, any more questions use, or thoughts? You think they're going to use Marauders to do these sites? Oh, 100%. Like, you can look at the Marauder prices like right bastions? now. They're at all time. Yeah, so Bastions he mentioned, but I was telling him, look at the margin, right? You're a businessman. 9.2 mil you're buying and you're selling at 10.4. After, oh, so after fees, it? it's nothing. Nah, not worth it. That's why I'm saying you got to look for things like the armor repairs where you can easily double or triple your money in a couple days. Like if you just sit on these, you buy it at like 25 a pop, you can sell it at 50, you're done. But you could just buy out the Bastion modules, right? So that they sell 50 and a pop. But the thing is, if other big manufacturers and traders see there's no more on the market, they'll just Stop list on. another 500. Yeah. Oh, shit. They'll dump it on you and then you get screwed. Right? So look at, okay, so Bastion module, let's look it up on Adam for Eve again. It's a great example, so you don't have to put your money where your mouth is and then lose all your money. Because trust me, I did that with the Arbalest. Do you know the Arbalest torpedo launchers? Yeah. I'm yeah. probably sitting on about 50,000 of these. Damn. I'm still sitting on it. So every time it was cheap, 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 I just keep buying. It never ends because people keep dumping and dumping and dumping. So you, you don't want to be stuck in that position. So Bastion modules here. Look at, look at this buy and sell demand. Do you see this right here? There's like three buyers and there's 300 sellers. Why would you want to stockpile this with a billion isk? You're stuck. That's probably the worst trade you could ever make. <laughs> Look at the sell volume. <laughs> all these sellers, this green is all sellers. Wait a minute, didn't you just say you did this and now you're teaching this class? Uh, you're learning from my mistakes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> <laughs> I saved you the trouble. I appreciate it. Do you think? Do you think there's um, oh, there's a module or ship that, as a as an alliance, we can start manipulating? Uh, Lo Loki's was a great starting point, actually. I was making a hundred mil per Loki when it was spiking. So this is broken right here. This is an anomaly. Usually, it was trading at around uh, two hundred. There's Even, not enough salvage. Yeah, that's the issue. So what we can do is. For example, just using Loki as an example, we build it in the hole and then let it go up. Sometimes it even goes back up to like 300 mil a pop. And then when it reaches a price that we like, we export it and we sell it. But in terms of cornering, I think it would be very difficult. And we, unless we have a very, very good understanding of the market supply and demand, it would be a long shot. Or a visual input mix just is are much more expensive than any other ancient salvage. Another one I would look at are like the X type or the, the Dead Space armor reps too. What, what, why is that them, Argus? What? Why is that? The way you said it? The input matrix? Everything else is used in reasonable amounts, whereas Neurovisual is the choke point. Like if you consume the entire market equally at equal rates according to blueprints. I guess Neurovisual is the one that gets consumed the fastest. And people notice mm -hmm. that. And so natural market forces have driven that up to be. Yeah, it's at an all time high right now. It used to be melted nano ribbons, but things changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about the melted nano ribbons. They work out for like 4.4 mil of pop or some shit. So, this that we're looking at is the salvage from the sleeper rats? That's yes. Oh. So when you're salvaging, the amount you make is almost solely determined by how many neurovisual input matrices you get. Uh, uh, roughly per per C5 site, roughly anywhere between 35 and 60 mil you get per site. The average, I think, is like 45 to 50 mil. Yeah. But then again it's kind of pointless to try market manipulation it because given how many ratters are in one yeah, of those it. it's, it's something you could slowly ch try to accumulate, but you're better off just uh, look, targeting elsewhere. If you... Well, I haven't done the math since the prices went up, but simply buying materials and processing and finishing ships has proved to be very profitable because according to my math, 
back when I was uh, fleshing out the T3 de destroyer market, uh, let's see, market price efficiency. Current prices for any given T3 destroyer is well above the production point. And Hecate's experienced a surge earlier, just like last week they were 100 mil plus. In Dodixie, they're still selling per 100 mil, and I sold four holes for the premium prices there, but that's because we had a close hole. So, if we can get, well, I, I don't know, it's, it's probably better to channel it into Loki's or the Tech 3 Cruisers, but again, demand for things, yada yada, but I'm going to have to get going, so... Okay, see you. Yeah, so I'm just putting in buy orders for these Dead Space armors because I think they're a pretty good opportunity to. Like the X types, C types, I think they have a lot of room to run up. Oh, this one's already high. But if you have the money, I, I might try my hand at uh, Dead Space armor rippers too. Maybe shield repair? I don't know who's going to use that. <laughs> Silver pair, I wouldn't look unless you're using, unless you're buying the pit excite for mm -hmm. kisses. But yeah. That's too much S sync in your in your own wallet the, to the, uh, compete with that. The shields have been at all time lows, and I stockpiled these way too many, and they're still not selling. So I wouldn't really touch these. I know. Yeah. So that's about it to wrap it up. Um, any other thoughts or ideas or questions? Uh. I think I'm, I'm coming a bit late. A bit late, but did you cover just run over the skills? Because there's obviously skills that you you can train to reduce taxes and everything like that. Uh, I did not go over skills, but there's not too many. It would just be accounting, and I think broker relations for market order adjustments. I think those two are the. They're two ones. really important. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's only two really important. It's the sell and the buy, pretty much. You don't need. You don't need like remote buying and all that shit. Yeah. Just make sure you're a Jedi and do your thing. What about your standings with the Caldar Navy? Does that bring down? I don't know anything about that. I heard it, something it about tags, but I don't really care enough to do it. You, yeah, you could buy tags and and just some level one mission, an agent mission. You turn in the tags, you get some standings. But you could also. Uh, Depending on, on what your characters can fly, you can do like uh, distribution uh, missions or you can do like uh, uh, missions to get your Kadari standing up pretty much. But you don't only need your Kadari name standing, you also want your texture standing. So it's Kadari State and Kadari name. Okay. So if, you, if, you, if you look at the screen right now, if he drags in one of his markets a little bit to the left, you will see that the station is being owned by the Kadari Navy. Yeah, that's why I was asking if um, having good standing of them affects, like, maybe your tax rate. It does, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but very little. Very little, yeah. If you want to max profit, yeah, you want to get it to, like, fucking high standing, yeah. but Love I you. got, my, my trading out, for instance, has, like, It's, yeah. And if you want to expand more of your market slot orders for like uh, buying and selling, you just focus on like trade, uh, retail, and then wholesale. They they add more and more. They double up how many market orders you can make. Tycoon is like 32. But once you reach like over a hundred, unless you're really trying to like consistently trade on the market, that should be plenty. I would try my hand at it first and see if you like it, and then just add it into your routine schedule. Like, oh, I'm gonna stop by G. It's almost like PI, but it's not limited to PI. You can trade everything. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm sure uh, as people have more questions and ideas, we can do follow up discussions and videos, and I'm excited. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I feel like I have a place to start at least. I have a little bit of an understanding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we can make like a Even little chat. Yeah, 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 I can. 
Yeah. I'm gonna have to drop guns to see it is. See it, buddy. I mean, I could set up a trade channel on this group. Like, if, if people have questions, I'm more than happy to keep my eye on it and be like, hey, if they say, hey, what do you think about this, or how does this work, and I can just answer it it's like customer service or something. Or mm -hmm. if I, I can take a screenshot like, hey, there, there's a trade opportunity here, why don't you guys go buy this or something. Damn, we're coming up, dude. We got a customer service? Yeah, man. Dex up oh, yeah. Dex up Vol Voluntary customer service, I that. Hey man, I want you guys to do well and grow your wallet so we can all do more stuff together. Yeah, let's exactly. join this Akate with me and do some money. Alright, sounds good to me. Alright, I guess that yeah, means yeah. we'll wrap it up here. <laughs> no, I'm not in a rush, bro. Yeah, well, thanks for putting that on there, Seth. Yeah, my pleasure. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk more about it in future discussions. Oh, there you go. You got your own fucking channel right now. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I'm gonna. I don't know if I should screenshot the freebie. I'm gonna leave it to you guys, and then if it's still there, I'll screenshot it for other people. Alrighty. Thank you for coming. Catch up. Uh, Thank you. Post this up and catch up with you guys.